de armă. Cred că cea mai distrugătoare armă, cel mai distrugător sentiment la ora actuală și chestia asta reprezintă ceva la nivel global, vine prin neputință. Așadar, dragi tine, feriți-vă de neputință. Neputința este aceea care îl face pe om să nu se mai focuseze pe propria viață, pe propriul scenariu, pe propria grădină. Neputința este cea care te deconectează de eul tău intern, te deconectează de Dumnezeu și te face să te concentrezi foarte mult pe părerile oamenilor, pe viețile lor, pe ceea ce fac ei, pe cum au dobândit acea mașină, cum au dobândit acea casă, cum au reușit ceilalți să aibă niște neveste atât de frumoase și eu nu. Asta face neputința, dragilor, și am rugămintea să, să înțelegeți că neputința produce lipsă de valoare, consum de energie inutil, frustrare, invidie și ură. Și atunci trebuie să te întrebi, ce îți vei învăța tu, nepoții, la bătrânețe? Ce o să le spui? Băi, eu am stat...
Хуйло, вот хуйло! Конец тебе! А! А! Пацан готов! А! А! А!
Пожрать бы, конечно, вообще не помешало бы. А, вот тут, короче, друган мой бывал точно.
Yo para...
hard time. How was Cuss treating you? What happened for you to be yes, loyal? What um, was his way of leading you? Um, developing into character. And um, that's why I had a wonderful time with him. Because everything about, everything about his life was about me. And so I never had a father, but um, I know what it's like to want to make a father happy. And so I wanted to be champion to make him happy. Cuss knows when to put the gas on and when to put the brakes on. You know, that's what a teacher does. He's a teacher. We all, we all teach everyone. Yep. All of us teach everyone. We're all teachers and students. This world is one big school, and we're the students of this world. So he knows the mind is always hungry. And the mind wants to do good, but we get so many negative thoughts in our mind, it's almost overwhelming to be positive. When you were down, he built you up. Would you say it was like a timing thing with him? No, it was no game. You, you know, um, there's so much power in humbleness. You know, when I'm, on, when I'm promoting the fight, I say outrageous things and stuff. I know the power of humbleness now. How did you learn that? I have to lose everything. You have to be the champion before you become the champion, so that means lifestyle. You have to be him before you become him. You got to be him before you become him. Um, you have to live his lifestyle. The lifestyle of a champion. Of the champion, you look at the champion. That's how it starts. You look at somebody, I want to be like him. You don't say, hey, I'm a bad mother I want to fight everybody out here and nobody's going to kick my ass. You see somebody and say, hey, I might want to do that. Because over there telling me, why, why should he have it? That's one thing I never had in my life, because I always got picked on and I never had jealousy or enviness about anything. And Cuss possessed that, you know, and he was telling me, why should he have all that money and you don't? Why is he, why, 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 why do you believe that he's better than you? Why do you think he should have all that money and you don't? And he was really serious about it. And that's with the competition shit. That's it right there, he's breathing that stuff right in me. Why, why should he have it and he's not better than you? He said how old he was. And I said it, um, he's 13 and then Cuss said he's lying. And he doesn't want to go to prison with the grown adults so he said he's 13. <laughs> wow. And um, so Bobby Stewart, because everything Cuss says is the Bible, and so he said, tell me the truth. After all these years, I've been there two years with him, and I said, tell me the truth. How old are you? I said, I'm 13. I'm 13. He says, tell me the truth. I said, I'm 13. So he got my birth certificate. He found out I was 13. And then Cuss and those guys just saw the magnet. I didn't even agree to it. They said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be heavyweight champ. You're going to win the Olympics. You're going to win the gold medal. You're going to do this. And you're going to become heavyweight champ. You're going to be this and that. And I didn't want him to think I was afraid. I started listening to this Italian guy, and he teaches me to fight. And I'm 14 years old. I win this, I win this national championship. Then I win this junior national champion. I'm breaking record. I knock a guy out in eight seconds. How did that happen? And he still told me I was, I was imperfect. I was wrong. I was flawed. So um, I didn't know how that worked, and I just started listening. I said, um, and, he, and at one point, he even adopted you, didn't he? Yeah, when I was 16, when my mother died. <laughs> yeah. My mother died of cancer. Yeah. And so he adopted you, and he was your mother, your father, your mother. Oh, mentor. my psychiatrist, yeah, my therapist, it was everything. When I went back home, I was getting ready to do some more robberies, because every now and then I would go back to Brooklyn and do robberies and come back, because the state was paying them like 150 bucks a month, and that, that wasn't even paying for my pants and my sneakers. So I always went back home and did robberies and came back with nice clothes and told them that my friends gave me these clothes because their older brother can't fit them anymore, something like that, some, some ridiculous story. And um, one day when we were going to um, do another robbery, a friend of mine was telling me, no, you're with those white people, Mike. Stay with them. These people love you, Mike. I saw you win this champion. They love you. I became champion at, at 20 years old, the youngest champion ever. I won titles. I had, I had everything in the world, but I still had that darkness in me. I had hundreds of millions. I had money, but I still had that darkness in me. That darkness wasn't out of me yet. And I got in a whole bunch of trouble. I got involved with people who had made me no good. And um, I lost a lot of money. I kept getting lawsuits. I was lawsuits this, lawsuit here, lawsuit here. Now, most of my money I was tricked off on lawsuits. If I spent $250 million on girls and trips and clothes, that's nothing to what I did on lawsuits. And so I started going through this process of I'm cutting clean. So I get clean for a year. I get clean for five years. But then I relapsed. And the reason why I relapsed is because I didn't have um, I didn't have a spiritual awakening. I just wasn't using drugs. You know, I wasn't sober. I just wasn't using drugs and liquor. I just wasn't using, I was miserable, right? Um, so 
eventually I, I, I received that spiritual awakening. I'm not perfect yet, but I'm just trying to get this stuff on track. And um, I'm taking, you know, I'm sober. By being sober, I'm able to um, show up for my children. And um, I'm just very um, grateful that my kids are able to go to these schools. And sometimes they tease me because I don't spell as well as they spell. And um, I'm not advanced galactically as well as they are. But um, I'm just happy that I'm able to put them in that position. I chose I was going to be different. I wasn't going to live that life anymore. And I was going to be um, the person I wanted to be. And everything I was doing in my past life, you know, I was champ, had money. That prevented me from being the man that I wanted to be. And um, I, could, I could pretty much say I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm on a I'm on the course of being the person I want to be. Um, I have dignity, I have self-respect, and anybody here to look at me and see what I'm doing. Walking into the ring, you ever get scared? To death. Really? Yeah. You never look scared? Well, that's the whole thing. Boxing is like acting. You only project what you don't feel on someone else. Mm. You know, but I found out that um, as I got older, I found out they're more scared of me than I am of them. <laughs> I don't care what people think about me. No? No way. If I did that, I wouldn't be, I guess, successful. I, you know, but I found out that um, as I got older, I found out they're more scared of me than I am of them. <laughs> I don't care what people think about me. No? No way. If I did that, I wouldn't be, I guess, successful. You know, I, um, I drive off that. It's hard for me to even excel if somebody doesn't dislike me, I hate me, I need them to excel. Mm. So your, your legacy is whatever it is, it is, but yes, um, it's honesty. Never being discouraged more than anything, more than honesty, because I still lie sometimes if I want something. And um, it's just never getting discouraged, never giving up. Even, cause, even if I'm lying, I know one day I'm going to die, and whatever I said don't mean shit. Impossible is nothing to somebody who tries. Success for me is um, not cheating on my wife, Success for me is um, being responsible and being present. That's success. Arrested 38 times by age 13. Heavyweight champion of the world by 20. Convicted of rape by age 30. You've lived so many lives. Yeah, that's true. And there's people that had worse. And in spite of, they still succeeded. So I'm nobody. I've been a millionaire most of my life. I'm good. I learned gratitude. This is what I learned from life kicking my ass. I learned gratitude. Things happen when two men get in the ring and we throw punches. What happens? Well, it's an unwritten clause in our contract that anytime during training and fighting, you can die. That's a great possibility that we wish don't happen, we hope don't happen. You can't continue being a comedian if you're not sharpening your um your psyche up even when you're doing it right here you're practicing your comedian act you know you have to continue to practice the more you practice it they say if you practice it every for a year you'd be better if you only practice it for a month so the more you do it the better you become and it's not about money because the money's going to be in charity and right. people want to and it's just about doing something good and that from that perspective that could be i used to like feeling like i'm doing something good for somebody more than myself I won't have in my mind, oh, I'm getting paid. I just don't want to never have that in my mind again. Yeah. I just never want to have, oh, I'm getting something for what I'm doing. I don't know what the future holds, but we're looking forward to just having fun and doing it for um, a purpose, a reason. When you decided to stop, was it difficult? Well, time will make you that person. Time will. Yeah, time will make you that person. What is time? I don't know. Right. As I got older in life, I... I really, so I, I had to deal with demons with that. I yeah. thought I was that kind of person that really my objective was just to hurt people as much as possible. Yeah. You know, not just beat but just to really hurt them, yeah. but they never forgive me. And that was just my goal. That's what I learned from Cuss. That's all I knew. Yeah. And he didn't have much time to teach me because he died shortly. He only had seven yeah. to six years to be, you know what I mean, to teach me anything. So what he had to teach me was fighting. Yeah. I'm just very grateful. I'm very grateful. I had a, had a good life. And um, people liked me, and people gave me benefits and stuff. But that's not going to happen to the average guy. That's not going to happen. No, what's going to happen to him when he gets angry and he throws a tantrum, like I throw my tantrum, they're going to come in the cell and they're going to beat him to death. You know, the goon squad's coming, they're going to beat him to death. I don't know I'm capable of living a godly life. God, God to me, is inconceivable to live a life of God. 
You know, we can only study his life and hope to be able to be in the path of God. But to live godly life is inconceivable to me. I just try to do the right thing. You know what I mean? And not necessarily the right thing is probably the best thing, but I just try to do the right thing. I try to um, res respect everybody and treat everybody the way I want to be treated. You know, I don't have no, um, I don't care if what you're black, white, Christian, but I don't care what you are. You know, the only thing I want is respect, because I give respect. That's the only reason why I want it. I just realized that um, I wanted to change my life. I didn't like the way I was living my life. I wanted a different, um, I just wanted a um, better, a better way of life. You know, I just didn't want to be the guy that had it all outside and had nothing inside. And I, found, I realized all this um, recovery and sober thing, and life in general, is an inside job. You know, um, if you're looking, if, I'm, if you're looking for happiness from out here, it's gonna be disastrous. It's, it's all an inside job. You know, it's all an inside job. You know, all we know about God is what people tell us about God. What our mothers, our fathers, what they tell us about God. We have people starving out here. You know, and they have no other choice but to commit crime. Else they're gonna starve to death. I have no dignity, and their wife might leave them out of shame, or the kids might not have respect for them. And um, we need some action, the work has to be done. I didn't have no motivation to do it, zero motivation.